ladies and gentlemen, there is a recipe for potato risotto that hopefully, if you do right, will look like that, but I'm going to let me explain it to you. Hello, welcome back to Uncle Matt's Cookery Essence. I'm going to make something a little bit unusual today. Uh, I'm going to use potatoes instead of rice to make a risotto. Baked potato risotto. I've uh, never done it before. If you're watching this video, it means it actually wasn't too bad anyway. So I hope you enjoy it. I'm going to get on with it now. Cheers. So there's the ingredients laid out. Those are ingredients for making the stock and for the finished risotto. So I'm going to prepare all sort of jumbled up all at the same time as each other. So for the stock, I'm removing the skins, but I'm not using a peeler because I actually want to take off quite a little bit more than just the skin. I want some of the potato as well. And we're going to roast this stuff up, get it nice and crispy. And that's going to be, hopefully, it all goes well, the main flavour in the stock that's going to be the stock for the risotto. A little bit of seasoning, a tiny bit of olive oil, and then get those into a nice hot oven. Somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes would be about right, but it's until they're nice and dark and toasty. I'm peeling two sticks of celery. The peelings are going in the stock and then sort of the, the rougher bits from both ends are going in the stock and then the centre parts are going to go in the finished risotto which I'm just going to dice up nice and small don't get um, too hell bent on what size they're going for just try to get an even size a nice even dice so there we go celery done this onion is for the stock. So just peel it and then roughly chop it up. Any old how, doesn't really matter. Other ingredients for the stock, some bay leaf, some rosemary. So I took one large branch from my plant in the garden, using about three quarters of it for the stock. The other bit is gonna be going in the risotto need a few cloves of garlic I haven't bothered peeling these, these are going in the stock so just say three of them roughly hack them up time to give the uh, potato trimmings a bit of a turn they've had 15 minutes, they're halfway there I'd say or maybe a bit more uh, this garlic is going to be for the risotto so if you've ever made risotto before it's made with rice right and if it riso means rice but this is a technique now whenever I've made risotto I always put in some either finely diced shallot garlic celery depending on what other flavors I may put other things in there as well obviously mushrooms and things so there were three banana shallots finely diced a couple of cloves of garlic and that's the celery just put it in one bowl together and now we're gonna finely chop up this rosemary if there are any purists out there, risotto lovers, you may be horrified by this monstrosity. But actually, do you know what? It's worthwhile doing. I would say I wouldn't have it all the time. I would prefer a risotto made with arborio rice. But, you know, as a one-off, as a, a special occasion or something, this is actually really quite interesting. I've also used pearl barley to make risotto. Uh, while I was waffling there, you can see me sautéing uh, the stock vegetables, trying to get a little bit of colour and then I think okay well we'll go a bit more because what I like to do because it winds up my lady is burn the pan a little bit but it's a fond and that gives a bit of extra flavour and colour to this stock. I boiled the kettle so that so far that was about a litre that went in in with the potato secret ingredient one teaspoonful of marmite so we're keeping this recipe completely vegetarian. And yes, I licked my finger. And that was another kettle full. So it's about two liters of water. And we leave it on a very, very gentle simmer. Now it's time to dice up the potato. So again, these are jacket potatoes, baking potatoes. 
I'm going for a size, a sort of like the size of a P, by a petit pois. Difficult to give you an exact size, and to be honest with you, obviously cooking times may vary, but you can go a bit bigger, a bit smaller, but do try to get them consistent, the same sort of size as each other, otherwise you'll have all, some are mushy and some are, won't be cooked. Parmigiano Reggiano, I think it's compulsory in any risotto. That was about 50 grams. The recipe at the beginning is a guide, it's a list of ingredients and you can change this up. You can use chicken stock, fish stock, vegetable stock. This is a techniques video. So there we go, 45 minutes. Got plenty of flavor from the vegetables and most importantly, the potato trimmings. And then I just thought I'd make a total mess on my work surface while I decant from a bowl into a jug just to give you an idea got about one litres yield from that stock and as it turned out that was just about right for the three baked potatoes that I used. So those were the fine diced vegetables. Just sweat them for a minute and then get the potatoes in. This is the same as method that I would use for making any risotto. So wine, reduce that down, reduce it, reduce it, reduce it till you're pretty sure the alcohol is gone. You can have a taste. You can go till it's completely dry the pan or just a little bit of moisture in there is also fine. Time to start adding stock. I'd say the main difference is from making this potato risotto to a rice risotto is I'm not stirring this as much and certainly not as vigorously. With rice you can really be quite rough with it because you want to sort of chuff up the edges of the rice, the grains of rice so they're more absorbent potato if we're too rough with them they're just going to break up and we're going to end up with sort of a, a very wet potatoey mash or slurry it won't be it's not what we're looking for here we're trying to keep some bite in the potato but it's got to be soft as well so really it's it's very difficult to give you exact measurements and exact timings this took about 20 minutes to cook I'm just showing you here as I'm going I'm sort of trying to fold and move the potato around every couple of minutes, give it a bit of stir, keep checking, just taste the little piece, how is it not quite there, add a bit more stock and just keep going until you're happy. If you go too far you will end up with a mush like we just said but uh, you, know, you might like that, who knows. And as I say this is the first time I've done this so completely experimental, that's all the stock gone in, I was surprised, I didn't think it would take all of it but it did. I like to finish all my risottos with a bit of butter and of course that's half the parmesan going in. Stir that, it's going to get nice and creamy now. Keep tasting, time for seasoning. I added zero salt, it's just not necessary. Add the marmite in there earlier, and the parmesan and we, yeah, I think we're just about done. The potato is definitely cooked, it's still holding its shape but it's not turning into mush. I always present risotto in a bowl, let it sink a bit, that's the remaining parmesan and a bit of extra chopped parsley. Of course this would work beautifully with mushrooms, some crispy bacon bits and a bit of creme fraiche on there but I'm just getting stuck in like this and it does taste, obviously it's taste potatoey because it's potatoes but that stock tasted like baked potatoes. It's quite unique. I was really thrilled with this. And there you go, demonstration. You can see potato is cooked but still holding its form. So anyway, that's this recipe done. Thank you ever so much for watching Uncle Matt's Cookery Lessons. Hope you like this one. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Ask me any questions, make some comments and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Coming really soon I hope. Anyway, bye for now. See ya.